Today we're going to be doing nuclear transmutation practice problems. So I have the practice problems here on the left. You're basically going to be solving for the blank and then determining if they, if it is a decay or capture and what type, and then determining if the overall reaction is a natural or artificial transmutation. So let's start with the basics. First, we're going to solve for the blank. So the first thing you do is you have to understand the arrow is your equal sign. So we've got two sets of numbers, the top numbers and the bottom numbers. They're independent of each other. We need to know the atomic number of the um, of this element because it's not written in. So you look that up on the periodic table and it's 79. And now we're gonna make the lefts and right sides equal. So let's start with the top. On the left, I have 198. So that means on the right, I'm gonna have to have 198. Zero plus blank is gonna equal 198. So the blank is 198. Those are always easy. Bottom number, 79 on the left, and I have negative one plus blank on the right. It's gonna have to equal 79 as well. So this one tends to throw people off a little bit, or sometimes, and it is 80. Element 80 is mercury, which is HG. And then we just solve the problem. Now let's do the next one, and then I'll do capture and decay at the same time. So for the next one, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's really not. Um, you have two things on the left and two things on the right, so you're just gonna have to add up the total left and the total right, and they're gonna make, you're gonna make them equal using the blank. So aluminum, AL, the atomic number is 13. And now we're gonna make the top numbers, the arrow is right equals, and then we'll make the tops and bottoms uh, equal. So on the left, I have 27 and four, which is 31, which means I'm gonna have 31 on the right. So I'm gonna have blank and one, and that has to equal 31. So the top number is gonna be 30. Then I do the bottom numbers. 13 and two is 15 on the left. So I'm gonna need 15 on the right. Blank and zero have to add up to equal 15. So in this case, it's 15 and element 15 is P. Now, um, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna determine if uh, what types of decay or captures they are. So the way you do that is by looking at table O. So if you go to table O, you're gonna say, all right, out of these elements, and sometimes not elements, right? They are, which ones are on table O? And those are the ones that you're gonna have your capture and decay type. So in this case, uh, this E is for sure, the HE is on table O and the N is on table O. So the E is a beta, the HE is an alpha, and the N is a neutron. So we are gonna call them beta. Now, is it capture or decay? The way we figure that out is simple. If the particle from table O is on the right side of the arrow, it's called a decay. So since this beta is on the right of the arrow, it's beta decay. Now, for this one, the alpha is on the left on problem two, so that makes it, you can use the symbol or the name, alpha capture, but also the neutron is on the right, so that makes it neutron decay. So there's more than one answer for number two. So that's how you do decay and capture. You just go to table O, find the thing that's on table O. If that thing is on the right of the arrow, it's being decayed. And if that thing is on the left of the arrow, it's being captured. What does it really mean? If it's a decay, it's being shot out of the nucleus of the atom. And if it's a capture, it's being shot into the nucleus and captured by the nucleus. All right. And that's really all capture and decay mean. And the way we represent them is by putting on them on the left or the right of the arrow. Now let's do artificial versus natural. This one's a little bit easier. For a natural transmutation, you are going to have one starting, one thing as your um, reactant, right? So your starting material, however, you, whatever you want to call it. So for here, I'm going to try not to uh, underline the whole thing. I don't want to mess up the ink. But um, since this is just AU starting, that makes it natural. Because in nature, atoms decay on their own without any additional help. So that's why natural decays always have one element on the left of the arrow. And then artificial, we call those man-made or scientist-made, whatever you want to call it, right? So someone, a person usually, right? Could be an alien, I guess. But a person in a lab took an atom and tried to break it open. And the way you break open ad an atom is by hitting it with another atom. Uh, they may not have tried to break it open. They also could have tried to make a bigger atom. But again, same idea. You need The way you make bigger atoms is you take a smaller atom and literally try to shoot it inside of the bigger atom and hope it sticks. And that's the way they try to make larger atoms. So artificial transmutations are always going to have at least two things on the left side of the arrow. So this one is artificial because that means the fact that there are two atoms on the left means it had to have been done in a lab somewhere. 
uh, where they tried to smash these atoms together to either make smaller atoms or make bigger atoms, depending on what they want to do. And natural always have one thing to start with because in nature, the atoms decay on their own. They just, in nature, you, it's literally just time, meaning it could take a hundred years, a million years, a billion years, but eventually the atom decays without any outside help. In a lab, they don't have that kind of time, so they make it happen artificially, hence the name. So that's how you do these. Um, a couple things that you need to be aware of. When you go down to number 11, see how there's a big three in front of the neutron? What that really means is that you have three neutrons. So you can think of it like a U plus a neutron becomes a barium plus a blank plus a neutron, a neutron, and a neutron. So when you do your math, be aware of that. And then everyone has trouble with number eight. They say, how could I possibly do that? There's two blanks. That's what I'm gonna show you next. Um, but, for, but before we do that, we're gonna jump right to the back because number eight is pretty much the exact same problems that are on the back. So when we go to the back of the page, they look like this. And you're gonna have an element and you're gonna do the transmutation reaction. Now the way you do it is simple. You go to table N on the reference table. So table N, this is the first time we've using it. Here it is. There's a bunch of elements. It's actually the same elements that are on the back of this chart in order, so that should make your life easy. There's this thing called a half-life. Don't worry about that. We'll learn about that later. And then there's the decay mode, which is what we're gonna be using. So Basically, this table tells you how they decay, and then what your job is to do is to figure out what they turn into once they do the decay. So these are all gonna be natural decays. That's why I don't have that option here. They're all natural because they're, they're gonna happen. Um, this, is, this is what they decay into in nature, and so that's all that really means. Um, so let's start with AU. So AU is 79. That's its atomic number, and it says its decay mode is beta. So if you don't know what beta is, you would just flip back table O, look up beta, and you'd say, okay, you can use 0 minus 1 E or 0 minus 1 beta, so I'll put 0 minus 1 with a beta symbol this time, and then it's going to be plus a blank. In other words, if AU gives off a beta, what does it turn into as a result? So our arrows are our equal signs, and now you just do the math. So the top number has to be 198, bottom number 80, element HG, and for decay mode, or big decay type, you can just put the beta sign or the beta minus, it doesn't matter which one. All right, and that's it, done, that's all you do. I'm gonna do one more with you, just so you can see a different one. So carbon-14, we look up how it decays. Its decay mode is, actually, let's do calcium. Um, so calcium-37, its atomic number is 20, so we look that up on the periodic table. Its decay mode is positron. So if you don't know the numbers for positron, we'll go back to table O. And you say, all right, positron is down at the bottom, and I could use 0 plus 1e or 0 plus 1 with the beta symbol. So I'll use a different one this time, 0 plus 1. I'll use an e symbol instead of the beta symbol, it could, just to show you it doesn't matter, plus the blank. So now the arrow is your equal sign, and let's do our, oh, wrong one. Should be here. So zero plus one and the blank. So now we do our math. For the top numbers, it's gonna be 37 on the left, so I need 37 on the right. Zero plus 37. And then we do the bottom numbers. 20 on the left, I need 20 on the right, I get 19. Element 19, let's check the periodic table, it is potassium or K, and so that's how you do it. And then for the decay mode, you can write the E, you could write the word positron, you could write the E with the plus, or if you do the beta symbol, you can't just leave it blank, you have to put the plus sign. So the way it typically works is if the, um, if you just write beta, most people are going to think you're talking about, if you just write the Greek letter beta, most people are gonna think you're talking about beta decay. If you want them to know that it's positron decay, you have to put the plus. I would make it a habit of always putting the minus and the plus no matter what, so that way there is no confusion. And then this is gonna be what you do on the, um, I guess it was number eight on the previous page, I believe. Yeah, number eight on the previous page, it's just gonna be one of these. And if you notice on this, um, if you look at table N, the order here is gonna be the order here, and it's just gonna follow it down all the way. So you're doing the decay modes for every single uh, radioisotope on table end for the back. And so that's everything you need to know to do this worksheet.